What is this? Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I love finding affordable ways to DIY a variety of things. Money can't buy everything, except maybe figures. I love collecting figures and recreating iconic scenes. Every figure deserves to shine on my display. So every week, I ask myself the same question, and answer it by creating something I'm proud of. Join my weekly adventure by subscribing to my channel. Leave your feedback and suggestions down below. I often get inspired by your comments, and I hope I can inspire you too. Last week, I altered Odin's appearance to make him look more like he did in the movie. Check that out. A couple of months ago, I upgraded my Infinity War Thor, making him more movie accurate. And a few weeks ago, I did the same thing to the Infinity War Captain America. So naturally, I gotta do the same to the final member of the Big Three, Iron Man. I feel like this is nobody's favorite Iron Man figure, and the reason is very obvious. So. Let's, Let's deconstruct, deconstruct this, this figure. figure. The biggest problem with this figure is the red they used. Ugh, Hasbro, why do you keep using this salmon red? Oh. <clears throat> this red makes the figure look extra plastic-like, therefore making Iron Man look more like Plastic Man, giving him a very cheap toy-like feel. I think a deeper, a more metallic red can still save this figure. His lower legs also seem to be very plain as well. It is missing some gold and silver paint. I'm gonna add some details back to his legs. That's my analysis. It doesn't mean this figure isn't great. I just wanted to make it even better. So, can I make it? I'm going to do the same thing I did to the Mark VII Iron Man figure, the one from the first Avengers movie. I'm going to apply a wash of black all over the red areas. This time, I'm going to be a bit more aggressive with the paint, since this figure is probably my least favorite Marvel Legends figure. I don't plan on displaying this figure at all, because it's just not that good. So I don't have much to lose. The only reason I have this is because I wanted Doctor Strange and Thanos. The neat thing about this figure is that there are lots of grooves on the mold, so the black paint should accentuate those lines in a very neat manner, giving the figure more texture and dimension. So far, you can see that the black paint is settling nicely in the grooves. The figure is already looking much better. Okay, next, I'm gonna add some gold and silver details onto his lower legs. This should make the figure look less top-heavy and more balanced. I'm also going to do some touch-ups on his arms as well. Ooh, look at that! That already looks like a completely different figure. All it's missing is a coat of glossy varnish over the dull looking red. I want the armor to look metallic, so it should be somewhat reflective. I don't have any metallic paint, but the glossy finish should look somewhat metallic. Ta-da! Here's the figure all painted. It looks so much better and movie accurate now. I love how shiny it is. And for some reason, it now looks more proportional than before. Let's compare him with the Mark 85 from Endgame. Wow, I think they look really good next to each other now. The Infinity War one grasped my attention more than the Endgame one, even though I prefer the Endgame suit. Interesting. Now let's take some photos and see how it looks. Hmm, not bad. Let's try another pose. This is so strange. This figure is now growing on me. It somehow looks beefier now than before, but in a good way. The paint job makes him look heavier now too. Now let me add the flame effects I made for my Mark 85 and Rescue display. Check that video out if you want to see how I made these. I love these pieces because I can put my Iron Man in dynamic flying action poses without the use of a stand. I don't love using display stands in my display, because I still find them distracting. And I don't like getting statues, because those are stuck in the same pose. But with these, I can put my Iron Man in dynamic poses and I can take these off whenever I want. The best of both worlds. 
I think this figure looks really good in flying poses because it has an overall sleek design, so it looks quite aerodynamic. I'm actually quite surprised at how easy it is to pose this figure. I was expecting it to be difficult because the original figure looks so basic. But so far, all the poses have this Iron Man feel to them. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm really starting to like this figure a lot. It went from the worst Marvel Legends figure to this fun posable and movie accurate figure. I just can't stop posing it. The poses work no matter what I do to them. Oh, okay, maybe not this one. Ooh, I like that I can even do more extreme flying poses with the flame effects. I wasn't expecting it to be able to remain balanced. That's it for the photo shoot. I can't believe I got so many poses out of this figure. I genuinely was ready to just lock this figure in a box forever. But now with the new paint job and my other Infinity War figures, I feel like I should maybe build an Infinity War display in the future. What do you think? Do you own this figure? Do you have it on display? Let me know down below. Give this video a like, and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Who should I display with this Iron Man figure? The Yen Game Mark 85 suit? Or his buddies from Infinity War? Let's have a look. Ooh, that looks good. Even though these three were never in the same scene together in the movie. Okay, I have to be honest. This has been eating me up inside for a while. The face of this Infinity War cap has been bothering me. I think I did an okay job making him less cartoon-like and more like an actual human being. But I don't think I did a great job capturing Chris Evans' face. I was pretty frustrated when I was painting it last time, and I think the result reflected that. I aged the face too much and I made him look like a grumpy old man. So after staring it for weeks, I'm gonna attempt to fix it again. My goal is to make it look younger and less grumpy looking, and hopefully captures Chris Evans' portrayal of Steve Rogers. One of the first things I notice is that his hair color is much lighter than his beard in the movie. I think that contrast is what makes him look like Steve Rogers. The beard I did was too light, making it look grayish. So having a darker beard should make the face look younger again. Here's the before and after. It looks like a completely different face. I'm much more satisfied this time. Let's compare this with what I did last time. Oh wow, the difference is quite drastic. I think the new hair color and the lighter skin tone helped a lot. The angry face is alright. I still think it's the mold. The hair is very helmet-like, and the eyes are too small. I can see a tiny tiny bit of Chris Evans in it. <laughs> Here he is all finished, finally. Just look at that before and after. If this is my first time seeing this, I wouldn't believe that this is the same figure. One is Steve Rogers, and the other is a random guy wearing a Halloween costume. Here's what my painted one used to look like. The new hair color helps so much. And he's not as old looking now. Here's the close up of the figure. There's definitely a bit more Chris Evans vibes now. I still think the mode itself is off, but I think this is the best I can do at the moment. What do you think? Do you see Chris Evans now, or is it still off? Isn't it amazing how a good paint job can change someone's face so much? I'm definitely gonna display this figure now. Let's put the Marvel Big 3 back together. Oof, that looks so good. I love how they have unique color schemes going on. And the great thing is, these figures went from disappointing to satisfyingly movie accurate. I'm definitely seeing Chris Evans now. Okay, I realized that in my Captain America video, I was quite grumpy because I was very disappointed with the figure. But to be fair, these are toys for kids age 4 and up. It just happens that we toy collectors are also into these figures as well. These figures cost a fraction compared to high-end figures like Hot Toy. So I've learned to be a bit more forgiving when it comes to missing paint details. The molds for these figures are generally pretty good. Would I prefer them with movie accurate paint jobs? Of course. 
but I don't mind spending a bit of time to improve these figures. Like Cap says, I can do this all day. I still have many many Marvel Legends figures I haven't fixed. Stick around to see more Marvel Legends content. Stay inspired, and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.